So I finally have an update for the dual PC mod that I've been working on. Uh, well, it, it, I haven't let it go. It was, well, one, it was the holidays. Um, and then, um, of course, other things a little bit. But I have been working on it here. And um, I, I just kind of wanted to show what some of the problems were, what, what I was trying to work on here. I, I modeled this thing umpteen you know different times trying to you know change the layout around trying to make it look kind of cool not be huge right I didn't want this thing to be um, two PC cases in one I wanted to try to have the same footprint if not less uh, preferably less than a standard PC case so what you're seeing here right now this is just about a foot tall I think it's 14 inches tall um, by you know whatever that is about eight inches so wide um, these are the mini ITX boards going in here uh, I, I think it's an okay idea right now I'm not in love with it but I've gotten this far so I, I kind of am committed now I, I wanted to, to say a couple things though that um, you know I, I feel that this is, is a project like the mini mechanism little robot car that it's just an ongoing project it's, it's going to be built um, it's going to work it will have probably a lot of problems. I know that I'm forgetting, um, well, maybe not forgetting, but, but um, you know, I, I, leaving room for different placements of things. For example, um, one, one of my, uh, I guess, mandates with this is, is I want to have this on uh, some type of a dual KVM switch. So I'm going to basically tear apart a couple KVMs and then just hook in another button so that when you push one button, it triggers uh, uh, both at the same time. Each one of these will be going to uh, two monitors, so I'll end up having four monitors total, and so that's why I need to have the two KVM switches. Anyways, I need to find a spot for the KVM, and I didn't include it in here, I, I mainly because I'm not really sure what the KVM switch is going to look like when it's all done. I'm figuring I will gut it, uh, take all the electronics out of the case, do the, uh, you know, whatever mod to it I need to do, then wrap the thing up in another case that I 3D print, and then I'm thinking probably mash it on the side here. Um, for the first one, I, I think I'm going to go kind of Road Warrior style with this, w as in um, if I need anything like cable management and things added on after the fact, I'm just going to bolt them onto the sides and just sort of let it grow and get all crazy looking and then in the future after I run it and play around with it then I'll start looking at how I could contain it better let let the let the problems I'm not thinking about right now present themselves and and then rebuild so that's that's my I guess you'd say that's my fun that's my my project is not necessarily the completion of this particular unit right here it's just the process of, of developing it developing it further and further um, for example the little mini mechanism car I've been working on since probably last summer almost end of last summer and I just keep making revisions and revisions and if you watch the last video on the uh, basically a KiCad tutorial on um, going over all the problems I had with that that board well that was probably about the fifth fourth or fifth board that I made like that um, and guess what I got the board back it works it's great I have it in one right now but there are a couple problems with it and I wanted to add on to it so here we go again last night I spent you know five hours redoing the whole entire board again for the most part so I could add some more um, screw terminals to it so same kind of thing we're just gonna keep adding and keep adding I just wanted to mention that so when people are looking at this saying hey you know when are you ever gonna get done um, I, I promise I will get this one done, but it's not going to look real cool. And then I'm going to move on to to the next. It might look kind of cool. I don't know. What do you think about this? This the the colors are only for contrast in the 3D design program in Katia here. So it's not going to be green and purple and whatever. This is this up here is going to be um, aluminum. These right here will be 3D printed, and these bottom uh, pieces right here will also be aluminum. Uh, possibly in the future after I know that everything's working right I might mill these out of aluminum as well all these things I just I just need to know you know how it's gonna work before I do anything more extravagant to it 
Oh, and, and this will be plexiglass. This is just one sheet of plexiglass here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll drill holes and then I'll probably etch, uh, the, like, I don't know, maybe like the Dissonance logo on, on the front here or something. Uh, I, I figure in the back here we'll, we'll bolt on some uh, cable management so that when the wires come out here they'll just sort of loop around from, this is supposed to be where the wires come out. So the wires will come out here, maybe loop around and just come out here in one big giant bundle. Uh, and a handful of other things around here. Now, um, let's see, what else did I want to say about this? Uh, at one point in time, the plexiglass was going to be aluminum. I, I wanted to do plexiglass, etch it, and then edge light it with NeoPixels. Uh, I think that's probably where I'm going with this, because that'll look pretty neato. Um, but then I was like, well, what if I just went aluminum, 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 and just make the thing a, a giant tank? Uh, but that was that was put away. So now I'm going to go back with this style here. And then the uh, the power buttons. You, you notice that I'm I'm leaving this all open. I thought about enclosing it. I did a few things where I put these at kind of a chamfer or a little bit of an angle here. That so the angle of these all match the angle of this, and then I could put a plate right over the top here, another plexiglass. But I feel like I really want to just leave this open. I, I just want to leave the whole thing wide open. Uh, see what happens. Maybe if if I need some air, I really doubt that's going to happen or be necessary. But I could just mount a fan here and a fan here. Again, like I said, Road Warrior style, have a just a one or two 120 millimeter fan sticking right here on the side here, blowing right on through. Um, I think that's a little bit a little bit uh, you know not necessarily. These are i5s. I'm going to run them just as i5s. I'm not overclocking. I'm I'm not worried about making this thing the hottest, you know, coolest computer in the whole world. I just want to have uh, the two computers in one so I can run, um, you know, multiple operating systems, multiple computers at the same time. So, oh, uh, so then the uh, the power switches and all, all that. So we got, uh, you know, what, what's the bare minimum that we need? I would like to have some USB in here, um, but I don't think I need it on the case. So, so USB hubs, right? So I'll maybe run a hub to the top is kind of the thought. And then I thought, well, how about if I take the USB hub and then I'll take the power switches, uh, one from each, right? And um, the buttons for the KVMs and probably a reset. That might be it. Run all of those wires up and out and have them sitting in a nice, um, I don't know, maybe 3D printed Ultimately, it'd be kind of cool to have it again out of aluminum, but you have this pod sitting up on your desk somewhere that, that is your, your buttons that you need. So you just kind of like reach over on the side here, push a button, and you switch from monitor to monitor or keyboard to keyboard. Um, incidentally, I, one of my other things that I want to have is I want to be able to switch from, uh, if you can imagine, the two monitors on the top and the two monitors on the bottom. I want to be able to push one button and just have my mouse change to the com to the com uh, the monitors up on top, so I could just go up there and do a, a little bit of thing, whatever I need to do, and then hit it again and then come back down to the bottom. That's similar to a setup I have at home right now. Then I want to have another button, a uh, set of buttons that I push, and that would switch the monitors from the bottom. It would basically swap the monitors around. See, there's going to be times where maybe I'm uh, running a process. Let's say, say we're doing a video render or just anything that's, you know, eating up some time a little bit. I could put that, say, up on the top monitor. So that's, that's up there. Then I'm down on the bottom monitor, you know, watching YouTubes, playing games, doing whatever I want to do. And then if I need to push a button or do something to the one at the top, I don't need to flip flop everything around. I just hit the button, bring my mouse up to the window up at the top, click, click, whatever I need to do, and then come back down to the bottom and, you know, go about whatever other business I was doing. So that's, that's kind of my thought there. Some other elements about this that I, I guess I'll point out, things that have been a concern for me that maybe are still a concern, but um, some of them I've just let them go. Uh, the, uh, the power supply here, so here's the main in, switch will be back there too, right? And then all of your wires coming out. So the wires are going to come out here, and, you know, I mean, the bundle of wires is pretty big. I'll uh, probably put in a modular power supply so I can take out all the wires that I don't need. 
but you're still going to have a big fatty pile of cables that's going to come out here and if I turn from the side you're going to see this probably loop all the way around out here so you're going to have this big old jumble of wires coming up here and then you're going to take the power from this and plug it in this board and then your CPU power you know it's going to plug in back in there somewhere uh, so think about this the uh, the power supply here only has one of, of the power headers for for one of the boards so I, uh, I assumed that this must exist so I looked it up and sure enough I found it I have it here a a splitter a power splitter so I figure if I put in you know 700 watts seems to be fine we've done the the watt calculation on all this that should be plenty I can take the one power out of this split it between the two and there will be my power source but anyways um, cables hanging out here then you come over here then you're gonna have the power cable coming out and then all your peripheral crap sticking out here uh, now for whatever reason it sort of bothered me because I was just thinking you know you're gonna have all your cables plugged in here and it's it's just gonna be a bit of a mess uh, so I'm gonna pull power out in a way and then I'll probably bundle all these together uh, just thinking cable management like in uh, your MDF in inside of a, a, a data room we might pull all the wires out bring them bend them over this way zip 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 tie them and then same over here and then bring the mess together clamp it to the side here and maybe drop it down the bottom here and out and away or wherever it needs to go somehow uh, manage it uh, okay I guess um, and then of course the split going into the KVM switches now these don't have video cards each one of these if you watch the other video they have dual HDMI outs so those will be the cables as well that are going to be coming out of the back here and then uh, of course they got to shoot up somewhere so hopefully that will get managed well I'm a little worried about some heat build up in here but really not terribly too much I, I know that these things you know we have uh, all this you know sitting right on top of each other but I really don't think it's going to build up that much heat but just to uh, be on the safe side uh, you know we'll, we'll check it and see how it goes uh, I might possibly even um, just build up a, a little microcontroller with a couple thermocouples on there and stick it in various places and just have a little readout somewhere telling you how hot stuff is. I, I honestly I really don't think it's going to be a big deal at all. At uh, one point in time I had these right here going across like so. Um, I made recently um, a decision to change uh, uh, decision to change it over to the side I think that's gonna be better the only thing I had to work with or to deal with here was um, I had to make this a little bit uh, stick out a little bit further there's some holes right in here that run down the PCB that I'll be able to anchor it in the uh, power supply at the bottom doesn't have anything like that so I'll have to either wedge it in tight or just drill some holes into this so these right here um, on the motherboard here here's the part and the, the brown crap is just the support material off of the uh, uh, Stratasys U-prints uh, we have um, so anyways then it'll just sit right in here like this Well, that's really all I have for the update right now. I need to uh, uh, finish getting the rest of the holes put into the side plates here. Maybe think about some holes for cable management, but I, I don't really know what I'm going to do there, so I'll probably just drill them after the fact. Um, and then again, like I said, if I want to etch something into this. I have all the materials. I have, I have tons and tons of aluminum. I was waiting for a while ago for the plexiglass to get here. I have that. Um, and so I'll probably be milling that out later and then I'll just uh, I don't think I'll tack that onto that vi this video I think I'll just upload this and let you know what I'm doing um, I did want to say one last thing though whatever you use for your CAD program uh, 
check this out. This is this is assembly, right? And this is a this is a horribly simple one. There's you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever. So parts in this, but it is an assembly of parts. And if you don't do this, I immensely recommend that you figure out or learn how or get a CAD program that can do some kind of assembly work for you. I was playing around with FreeCAD, uh, trying to do some assembly with that, and it was it was a little nightmarish. Um, but you know, we we have to use what we have to use. Um, Fusion 360 seems to be great. I just have a little bit of a concern about how what their future is going to be like. I think their future is going to be great. I think they're just going to start charging everybody after you already have all of your models up into their cloud and you can't do anything else with them. Anyways, um, but I love it. I think I think it works great. So um, I, I would highly recommend that. Even if you're getting the paid for version, I think it's. Uh, it, it's it's pretty expensive, but it's like thirty dollars a month um, to use it. That's you know about what people's cable subscription. And the nice thing about things like that, I, I use uh, for my. Um, I have a large format 3D printer, and I buy that software as I need it as well on on kind of like a three month lease at a time. If you're not doing a lot of 3D design then you don't pay for it. Then all of a sudden you say, hey, you know, I got this job I need to do. You go there, swipe a card, and uh, you're, you're good for, you know, at least the month or so. All right, anyways, um, just, just kind of a quick uh, roll through here. In assembly design, if I need to, that, that was a little bit crazy, but uh, I can pull this whole thing apart, you see, and all the pieces come away. Uh, not that that's super duper cool or anything. Uh, it just shows me, you know, how things work together here and um, you can build uh, if you want to call it relationally I guess um, when I when I go to put all the holes in here I need to make sure that the holes in the magenta piece here match with the holes in this plate as well and at any rate once you get that that done it's it's just simple measurement right then you align it that's in Katia here that's what these little circles mean that that the hole in this plate is aligned with the hole of that other one there and what you get from this type of deal is the satisfaction uh, the confidence that when you go to put this thing together it's going to work uh, if you have watched my videos on the CNC's that we build there there was a story that I tell about how a month before the the recent class started what what I'm calling version three of the CNC's I didn't get a part I I, I sorry there a part um, a supplier didn't have a part any longer so it caused me to revise the whole entire unit now by the time class arrived um, I was done but we had never built that model before yet what that's the one that finished came out worked cut metal, cut aluminum, cut steel. And so I attribute that all very much to uh, being good with assembly and understanding how to fit things together and you know allowing tolerance when necessary. Um, and, and things like this, you, you want things to work out right. Um, to some degree, you have to model the, the parts um, that you already have so you can see how they, they fit together here. So as you see, this is the mini ITX board. It's reasonably about the height of the, of the, the fan on the, uh, the heat sink and such. The RAM sort of kind of and the peripheral stuff up here. But definitely the board um, uh, dimensions there. Same with the power supply. All right, so that's it. I will, I'm sure I'll do other videos on actually you know, how to assemble things, but right now I'm gonna uh, just clip this off here. I will finish putting in holes and then I'll break the camera back out when I get to, to milling things.